my name is Maria Mars. I really don't remember the complete details of my life, but I'll do my best to recap. When I was a little girl, I remember being thrown out of my home. Why I was thrown out? I haven't the slightest idea, or any memory of. But maybe it had something to do with this curse that I have on me. This wretched curse that torments me and has always tormented me since I was banished. Ever since I can remember, I have always had a problem about these cuts and scars on my body. How they got there, honestly, I don't think I'll ever know. There are my arms, my legs, you and my face. The problem I'm having with them is the bleeding. Jesus. How it got everywhere and on everything. I couldn't even go out into public with the gallons of blood that I seemed to leak out into the streets. And the people on the outside of the walls don't seem to care. But instead of trying to get me to a hospital, they take out their phones, they snap photos, and they take videos of me, making a mess of the streets like I'm some kind of zombie. Nobody has any sort of consideration anymore for the injured. I've been living under an overpass for the last 16 years, surviving on nothing but the taste of my own blood. What I wouldn't give were a nice life, an apartment, the proper health care to fix these oozing wounds. But then one day, while I was giving myself a blood meal to survive, I made this strange discovery while putting focus into a puddle of my blood. All I remember is looking at it and wishing how I had an actual drink, something cold. And suddenly this puddle began to morph into a glass of water. How is this possible, I'm thinking. I started to practice more and more with this strange newfound ability. I started out changing my blood into foods and drinks. Then I started focusing on changing it into more complex things, objects of all sorts. I was now able to turn my blood into weapons of defense. Once I mastered this ability, I joined a traveling freak show in order to gain some money for my own. I was eventually able to buy my own home and able to get the surgery that I needed so badly to finally stop this bleeding. Thankfully, the operation was a success. And now, I no longer had to go around covered in bandages like I was some kind of war victim. Hell, I look better than I ever have. The traveling freak show that I was with, the ringmaster had a special name for me. Everyone soon started to call me by that name instead of my own. I was known to everyone as Bloody Mary. First college party, Bradley. No, oh, Mary, you'll be fine. But that Theo better not be anywhere near you. That jerk face. I don't know what you have against him. He's been my friend since before I met you. And that's how it always begins. First, they pretend to be your friend, but they secretly want more from you than friendship. I know he's that kind of guy. He has never once made a pass at me. You need to stop being such a jerk. You get so paranoid at times. All I'm saying is that I better not catch him trying to do anything like that with you or I'm going to knock his jaw right off his stupid looking face. I thought you said that this was going to be packed. I thought you were going to shut your mouth, but here you are still running it and being ungrateful. Hey, why must you be a fucking asshole? You know what? I'm going to the bathroom. I've had it with this shit. The Joe's asshole act is getting old. I'm about ready to leave him. Oh, well, hi, Mary. Hi, Theo. Hope you're doing okay today. 
I didn't think you actually attended these college parties. I usually don't, but I also didn't want to stay home doing nothing either. What have you been up to lately? Uh, just my same old, same old. Cramming for exams and slowly making my way to getting my bachelor's degree so I can stop attending this shithole of a school. So many disrespectful douchebags here. Fuck, I know, right? To think we'd have some well-mannered people attending the college. But no, all a bunch of assholes. Speaking of assholes, how has Bradley been to you? He's been real jerk lately, being a typical jealous jock. I'm thinking about leaving him. I can't stand him anymore. That might be your best bet. I'm not gonna lie, but I've always thought he was kind of a dick anyways. You deserve better. Hey, I heard that, you damn jerk face. And I heard you too, Mary, you prude-ass bitch. When you get home, you can pack your shit and go. By the way, Theo, if I see you anywhere around here after she's gone, I will kick your jerk-faced ass. I've had enough of you. I'm completely enraged by you and your attitude. What was that all about? I'm so sorry you had to see that. I didn't mean to do it. I thought I was finally over it. Over what, Mary? Please, tell me what's going on with you. Theo, I don't know if I should tell you. I don't want you to think differently about me. Why would I think differently of you? You know I've known you for years, Mary. I mean it. You can tell me anything. <sighs> Many years before I was a resident here at the trailer park, I spent my better years in a traveling freak show. A traveling freak show? What for? I don't understand why. Why would you of all people be in a traveling freak show? I was born with an obscure ability for as long as I can remember. I had open cuts and wounds covering my body. They would leak blood out of me. It was uncontrollable. After years of doing this, I learned that I had the ability to turn this blood into various objects. Your blood is like some kind of molding, buddy? But it only works if I focus on the blood and keep an object in mind. For years, I had to turn my own blood into my home-cooked meals. Uh, what? I was later picked up by a traveling show after I had been taken to a secret facility in England. After earning enough money after I had my final show in Christonia, I had a series of surgeries to fix my bleeding wounds. The operation was a success. The only thing they could not fix was the scar on the left side of my forehead under my hair. No way! I have a birthmark on my back that looks just like this! This can't be. What is this all about? When I was a small boy, my surrogate mother had told me that she had found me outside of a really large palace somewhere in England. I think I heard her talking to my surrogate father about it. They said something about the symbol representing a secret civilization of some sort. If we both have the symbol m marked on us, we maybe we are destined to go there. Uh, well, maybe if we do this, we can learn more about our past. Maybe some research is in order. So what does Wikipedia say about this? It, it says here that it is associated with a civilization within the outskirts of England called the Palace of Rivagaya. 
that would explain why we were both in England during our early childhoods. And it would explain why neither of us nor our biological parents. Maybe going for a trip to this palace might reveal it is why ne that neither of our parents wanted us. I think a trip for us may be in order. And lucky for us, there's a bus that will take us off from town in the general direction of the palace. We can take the bus as far as it'll take us, and then we can foot it the rest of the way. Let's start packing. Get us those tickets. I'm up for an adventure. Theo, I just want you to be careful on your trip. Our parents are going to worry about you so much. I'm so glad that you decided to come with me on this trip. I know that it's been a long journey and now we are traveling along a deserted backwoods road, but at least we have each other's back. Couldn't be more right than that. Would never be able to get Bradley to do this. By the way, what's with the necklace? I usually don't talk about it. This necklace has been attached to me since I was a small child and I was never able to remove it. I usually keep it tucked under my shirt so it doesn't show. Maybe it has something to do with the symbol. We'll find out when we get to that palace. I'm wondering what kind of palace civilization would just throw up two children at such a young age. Believe me, I have tons of questions in regards to this for both of us. You there. Stop! I can't let you and your friend go any farther. This path is dangerous. What? What are you talking about, sir? I overheard you guys talking about the palace down this path. The palace of Rivagaya. You must not go there. It's a place filled with monsters and all forms of evil. I have had to fight tons of holy creatures that have escaped from there. Sir, I'm not going back. We came all the way here from Norway to learn about my past. What are you talking about? My friend and I have the mark of the palace on our bodies. We did research to learn what it meant, and it brought us here. We're not going back. Who are you to tell us to go back anyhow? I am the Orange Officer. I'm part of a secret clan of fighters that has dealt with creatures from beyond since the fall of the Dragon King back during the medieval ages. This place is dangerous. For your information, I have the ability to turn, to turn my blood into weapons if I need to to defend myself. What? What are you saying? I'm not going back. You can either follow us or you can go back to lurk in the bushes and stalk other unsuspecting travelers. I'm coming with the two of you. It's not safe. My queen, we have visitors. Oh, is that so? Looks like we'll just have to send our villagers after them. What the hell kind of palace is this? I thought it would be a bit more fancy than this. Me too. I just want to get to the bottom of our origins. Just trying to figure out why they did this to me. This way gives me restless dreams. I must know why we were casted out. This must be the palace dungeon. Such an eerie sight to behold. Come on, Theo. We must travel farther inside.
weird. The furniture in here seems a bit modern for something abandoned for centuries. It was said that many vagrant individuals tried staying here, but were never seen again. All this stuff were definitely carried here from town. They were definitely dedicated to bringing a couch, armchair, and ottoman here. They were crafty, too. These lamps are candle-lit. Pretty smart way to light up an abandoned wonder like this. I think we should get a move on before we go missing, too. If anything that orange officer said has any truth to it, this place also is home to some monster-like creatures. This is odd. Why did they build a hallway outside like this? It's getting soaked by rain. Kind of nervous about that pentagram. I'm gonna stay up here. Tell me what goes on. Is that a little girl? Are there people in here? Oh, you wasn't lying when you said you could change your blood into the different objects and stuff. Now oh, you got that cool flamethrower. Take care of those monster things. Theo, stay back. We've got company. Who are you? Show yourself. What the hell kind of palace is this?
That looks like a key. It might open that door straight ahead with the red light above it. Come on, we're farther inside. Try to keep them out. I'm gonna try to find another way around so I can get back to you. Hello, fellow palace trespassers. What? Who's there? Silence. I'm he who was called Shadeko. You three have made a mistake of coming here. This place isn't what it used to be. Many centuries ago, this palace was a beautiful place to me. It was once a very happy community. Since the queen had lost temper over her last love, we have all been transformed into monsters. I, Shadeko, was once loyal to the queen until her selfishness has transformed us into disgusting creatures. Since you are here, I could use your help. Maybe you can try to help the queen change her ways and get this palace back to normal again. The palace is a vast kingdom to itself. Each section of this palace is home to different kinds of monsters. As you journey through here, I will guide you and tell you about the creatures ahead. Beware, if you don't make it out alive, you may never be the same again. what that Shadeko thing was. It had a very menacing voice. I don't understand what has happened here. I, I don't comprehend it either. Whatever the hell is going on here, it has turned its denizens into some kind of monsters. I'm just glad you were still able to do the blood trick. And lucky for us, these monsters are trapped behind some barriers and they can't seem to make their way over toward us. I suggest we go into the next building before they find a way around to get us. It looks like this area was populated with homeless people also. Probably not anymore considering these things walking around or even outside the window. These zombie-like creatures, what is this all about? I hope we get to the bottom of this soon. We gotta travel farther inside and find out what this is about. It seems to me like you are doing a splendid job at surviving. Things are gonna get worse at this end of the palace. This end of the palace is home to a deadly serpent who wanders under the palace. It's a possibility it may surface to confist on your mortal flesh. So beware. Careful in here. This place doesn't look very trustworthy. What was that? Looks like the vagrants got this place all booby-trapped. Is there any clear path to step on? Shit, oh. Use your blood staff. <sighs> Trying. Ugh. What the hell's all that about? It's like their souls are leaving right out of their body. Ugh. I want to be behind the hose again. Didn't we just come there?
What are we looking at? Still here. Be careful, Mary. Don't get us caught. Protect <laughs> us, Mary. <laughs> Doing the best I can. This one's stronger than the last one. Ah. The vagrants must be infected by whatever this is too. And whatever that is. Whatever that's infecting him, I don't want to be infected too, and I don't want you to be infected. Sounds like there's children running around in here somewhere. Yeah, it sounds like memories of my past. Good hit. Great. There's more of these fuckers. <laughs> trying to see. Hard to tell with everything so foggy. What is that? Okay, that was, that was bad. <sighs> it almost looks like a dead end. I'm nervous about the fact if we see any more of these bars that they're going to shut behind us and we won't be able to get out. Ugh. This is making me feel claustrophobic. in here let's get out yeah I don't want to be around for that where do we go okay that's a long way down that must be the way out let's go what is this place where are those monsters surrounding the area over there I'm not sure Mary but I'm kind of wondering who that is standing in the middle of that battleground over there. She might have the answers we're looking for. Uh, Your Highness, I'm guessing you are the queen of this palace. But please, uh, forgive me for being a little shocked at your appearance. But, um... My friend and I, we've traveled all the way here from Norway just to, f to f learn of where it is we've come from. And it has brought us all the way here to this abandoned palace. To outside this, this palace is abandoned, abandoned yes. But this place, this palace, used to be a thriving community. A thriving kingdom, if you may. But that was over 200 years ago. And yes, I understand that your journey has brought you here, my son. Son? 
What are you talking about? What does that mean? It, it is no secret that you are my son. If, if you bear the mark of the palace on your back, you are indeed the, the prince of Vervagaya, my son. Theodore, I'm so happy that you've come back to me after all these years of being separated from me. I do apologize for looking so disturbing to someone who's been outside these walls for many of years. Please sit down and let me explain to you what all has happened. Why it is I had to send you away from me? You? You are my mother? This can't be. Please, do tell me why. Why is it you have sent me and my friend away from here? My friend also bears the mark, too, but it's on her forehead under her hair. Please, do tell me why. Why it is you sent us away? Well, Theo, it was over 200 years ago. 200 years ago? That's impossible! I'm only 19 years old! How... how is this even possible? That is because the time in my palace passes much differently than it does in the rest of the mortal world. On the outside of those walls, it was only 20 years. But here it's been 200 years. Time passes much faster within the walls of my palace. Now, if you don't mind, let me proceed to tell you what has happened since I had to let you go from my palace, you and your friend both. Back 200 years ago, this used to be a very happy civilization, a world of all its own, away from the world, rest of the world. I was the queen, and still am the queen, of this palace. The palace runs off of my emotions. I was linked to the rest of this world. Until... <coughs> well, it's still kind of difficult to talk about it to this very day. Oh, it's very difficult. 200 years to this day was the most traumatic thing that has ever happened to me. And the rest of this palace. Wait, wait are, are you saying that you can control what happens within this palace using your emotions? That, that That's definitely something right there. Please, Mother, if, if you don't mind, continue to tell me the story. I, I want to know more. Me and my friend both do. It was on this day, 200 years ago. I was about to be wed to your father. That's right. He and I had not been married yet when we con when I had conceived you. And we were planning on getting married. But the problem is, he never showed up to the wedding. He left me at the altar. That's when things start to take a turn for the worst. It's still hard to talk about, my son. I still can't believe your father had done this to me. Uh, uh, please, Mother, d do tell me, what, what did he do that was so bad that it turned this, this palace into this, this wreckage that it is now? I searched the entire kingdom within the walls of this palace just to find where it is he had went. But here's the bad news. We did find him. But he was laying in the bed of another woman. This woman being your friend's mother. What? Does this mean we have the same father? No, Maria. We do not have the same parents. Your parents were that town's alchemists. Your father had died maybe a year or so prior to this incident. He died during an experiment with alchemy that it went wrong. Both of your parents were our town's alchemists and traitors to my kingdom. Your mother had consummated 
with my husband, the father of Theodore. But I just could not forgive this. I simply could not. The things that I did to your mother, such ungodly horrific things. Oh, such horrible things that I did to her to pay back what she had done to me. Mother, please tell me you didn't do what I think you did! Again, this palace, it runs off of my emotions. Everything about this place changes depending on my mental state. After I had found your father in bed with that bitch of an alchemist, oh, it sent me into a, a dark state of depression and anger, which has changed the palace into this horrific mess that you see right now. Which has also turned a lot of its villagers into disturbing and fucked up creatures, hungry for human flesh. I bet you know exactly what I've done to your mother, Maria. What the hell? Why would you do that? That was my last living relative! No, tell us why you banished us from the palace and didn't keep us within the walls. Well, Mary, how about I start with you first? <laughs> when I found you in the next room, after I had killed your mother and my husband, I had taken you and given you that mark on your forehead and used what little bit of alchemy that was left in your parents' cabinets to give you that horrific bleeding curse that I know that you've discovered over the years. After that, I had thrown you out of the palace and left you to wander for the rest of your life. And that was my revenge to your mother for destroying this kingdom. This you bitch! Now, my son, you. I knew that after my transformation had taken place, I would not be able to properly raise you. Not in the state that I was in. That is why I had to make you leave the palace. I put the mark on your back so that maybe someday I could find you and then bring you back to your happy home here in Riverdale. But the problem is, the only people who would have been watching over you were some of my palace villagers who have escaped the palace. So, you were marked and being, and being watched over by monsters. Monsters that I have created. Unfortunately, they did not help me in bringing you back. And you're probably wondering about the necklace around your neck that you've never been able to remove. Please, let me tell you a little bit about that. I put that necklace on you as a child. Because I thought you were going to be staying with me in this palace. And it was a symbol of you. It was a symbol of you being the prince and the future of this palace. Unfortunately, it was... It's cursed. You'll never be able to remove it. Because it was made by some of the gold here within the walls of the palace. And this gold will help me stay powerful years after everybody else is gone. It will continue to make me more strong so I can continue to kill anyone who trespasses. The power radiating off of this gold allows me to use the negative energy that is fixed within the walls of this palace to kill off any unnecessary invaders coming into this palace. And I'm also going to use this energy to kill off the last of this alchemy family that is from a dust. <laughs> No, mother! No! 
No, no, not at all, no! I cannot allow you to harm a hair on the head of Mary. She's been the only friend I've had in Norway since since I was a I was a small kid. She and I have been through a lot together. Especially through all of this. I cannot allow you to harm her. I will not stand for it, Mother. I thought I had come back to find a happy home, but instead, I have found a broken mess. Mary, I know what I have to do in order to beat her. I'm sorry I have to do this, but it's the only way it can be stopped. What are you talking about, Theo? What are you planning to do? It's the only thing I can do to stop her, Mary. I really hate that I have to do this. I really wanted to continue being here for you, but... She has to die. And you have to be the one to do it. And before I go... I want you to take this as a token of my appreciation and affections that I've had for you over the years. Secret affections that I've had. You... No. <laughs> Don't do it. on me. It was your fault that he jumped into the lava surrounding that platform. All because you stuck a cursed amulet around his neck. All for what? Your own selfish gain of power? I'm going to make you the first person I ever kill.
looking out at what is there Surrounded by angels and by demons Trying to figure out which one's inside of me Searching in my soul Am I the fallen or can I fly? Deep in my soul there lies a devil And yet somehow a goodness thrives I never understood these imperfections Till I saw myself through your eyes Perfection isn't perfect It's what I needed Was never gonna find it down inside No, no, girl Perfection isn't perfect It's what I needed It's you So there lies a battle Am I darkness or am I light? Do I belong in your sunshine? Or do I belong to the night? Trying to find my perfection Until I saw myself Through your eyes Perfection isn't perfect It's what I needed Was never gonna find it down inside Perfection isn't perfect, it's what I needed, it's you. There was no winning Until I was a part of your life You made me see myself through your eyes You gave me wings so I could fly If I fall, I'm still the same man. 
affection Well, it was never mine to find Perfection isn't perfect It's what I needed Was never gonna find it down inside No, no, girl Perfection isn't perfect It's what I needed It's you I truly hope you enjoyed the program. This is a Goonie production.